Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to Be With Me. We're on episode 43 of season two. Today we have, it's either the most beautiful story in scripture or it's right up there. Uh, and we know that because it basically tells us that. So we're in for just a sweet, beautiful, sublime story. So let me just read it and just prepare to have your hearts touched. This is um, Jesus being anointed at Bethany. I'm going to read from Mark. It's in three of the Gospels, Mark, Matthew, and John. I'm going to read it in Mark and then fill in the details that the others provide. This is Mark chapter 14, verse 3. And while he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he was reclining at table, a woman came with an alabaster flask of ointment a pure nard, very costly, and she broke the flask and poured it over his head. There were some who said to themselves indignantly, why was the ointment wasted like that? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor, and they scolded her. But Jesus said, leave her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. I'm going to say that again. She has done a beautiful thing to me. For the poor you will always have with you, and wherever you want, you can do good for them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for burial. And truly, I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. So let me just uh, run through the passage before we just touch our heart. First of all, uh, the other Gospels tell us this is six days before Passover. Passover is on a Friday at sun, sunset. So this is on Saturday before that. So this is right before the great, uh, the triumphal entry, right before the start of the great week of Jesus's life. Um, they're at Bethany, which is his last location. He's kind of like sleeping in Bethany and then, then going to Jerusalem. He's at Simon the leper's house. Presumably Simon was no longer a leper, but was still referred to being that way. And then this gospel says it was a woman. The other two gospels tell us who the woman was. Who is it? This woman that's remembered forever. Well, it's Mary. It's Mary of Martha and Lazarus fame. And we find that Lazarus was reclining at table. Martha was serving the meal at Simon the leper's house. And and Mary was the one that this that did this. So this is Mary. You know, wow, God bless her. So then what's the action? There's an alabaster jar. She breaks it. The jar is broken. So the perfume is grossly poured out. We find out how much it is in some of the gospel. It's a whole pound. It's a pound of nard that that probably came from India, like it's like a half liter of of uh, of this spice. So something that was normally measured in drops uh, or smudges uh, or dabs on the on the head, which is how the Romans used it, was extravagantly used. And we find in the other Gospels, not only was it his head, but there was so much of it is also his feet. And then we find that she let down her hair, unbound her hair uh, in this intense personal devotion and wiped her feet, wiped his feet with her hair. And then we find out later from the disciples who are criticizing that this cost 300 denarii, which, you know, in today's wages would be thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars. So this was extremely extravagant, extremely expensive. And of course, the knucklehead uh, disciples, they scold, they're indignant. Uh, we find out that Judas is the one that actually speaks. And then the, one of the Gospels explains it because he was a thief. And obviously this was a tremendous cash uh, outlay. Okay, so let's get to the just the highlights. Uh, what she has done will be told in memory of her and wherever the gospel. So not only just it is a memory, where is that memory? The memory of this story is in the entire world. It's going to go to every tribe, every tongue, because it's in the gospels, which we know is going to go everywhere. Uh, and uh, it says that she does what she could. Uh, so wherever you are, whether you got... A, a, 
an extravagant uh, option or a humble option. Uh, it like says, oh, just bloom where you're planted kind of a thing. And then just this, this just very touching line that she has done a beautiful thing. She has done a beautiful thing. The great criteria, like what can I do today that's a beautiful thing for the Lord? Um, in John, it says, uh, leave her alone that she may keep it for the day of my burial. In other words, uh, I think it means that she can keep this memory. They're like hassling her. Uh, why do you trouble the woman? And they're hassling her. And, she, and Jesus says, no, this is something to be treasured and thought of. All right. So what a beautiful story. Uh, Jesus tells us we can do good to the poor any day. So maybe today's the day for that. The beautiful thing, though, let's center on that. It's a humble thing. She obviously was on the ground. She was on her knees. She let her hair down. Uh, she really uh, approached this humbly. It was extravagant. She breaks the jar, the expense, the volume of the of the perfume, the sweet smellingness. This was a, a sweet smelling memory and memorable. You know, is there something that we could do today that could be told in memory of you? Is there a letter you can write? Is there a visit you can do? Is there words that you can do? Is there service that you can offer? Is there devotion that you can represent? Uh, just so touched with this. She has done a beautiful thing to me. So let's today just sit on that thought. Sometimes in this podcast, we take a thought and we pin it to our, our jacket like Jonathan Edwards used to do so that thought, that thought is in the forefront of our life. And this is it today. Let's do a beautiful thing for the Lord. Let's do a beautiful thing for the Lord. Thanks for listening. I trust I'll see you tomorrow.